and we have the same weights. We have not changed the weights on any of the implements. They have remained the same for the 40 plus athletes. And the whistle's blown. Here we go. The first heat. Wow. Gregor Szymanski, Polish power. <laughs> And those are the wrong names on the screen currently. Let's see, we've got World's Strongest Man Mitchell Hooper up there as well. Helping out moving that barbells. Randy Cole gets that lockout on lane one. And we have Randy on the yoke. Picking up that yoke. He gives a little woo! Yeah. Realizes that, that is not the same as the one at home. Uh, we've enjoyed seeing those faces all throughout the day when they finally get to that yoke. That was the best one, I think. Woo! And Szymanski just following, falling a little short of that dumbbell. Randy leaving it there. Time is up. And again, these weights have not changed. Still absolutely massive, massive, massive weights. And this is our men's masters 40 plus division. We will have heat number two, a full four man run. Johan Espenkrona of Sweden in lane one, Scott Bloom of USA in lane two, Doug Madewell of USA in lane three, and Matt Gary of USA in lane four. Ben Crone. I love that name. It's got some power to it, doesn't it? It does. You're not going to forget that name. Sweet in lane one. Power. Beautiful. Lane one to three on the monster belt and four. All four guys at the monster belt. Did you see that strict press from Scott Bloom in lane two? Beautiful. Can he do it on the yoke? Wow. Another strict press from Scott. Oh, and he dropped it behind him, which you're not allowed to do. He's got the power to do it again. Yeah. Just wasting time though, isn't it? You got to do. Let's go, Johan. Come on, Johan, you can do this. Big presser. There we go. I think he's got it now. He's got it in the right position. Oh. Just use those legs a little bit. Push, push, push. Oh, so frustrating. Come on, Johan. Can you try? Have you got time? Can I... No, there's no time to try again. Three men make it to the block. Lanes one through three. Well That's done. big points. That is big points. Johan got so close, but that block kind of teetered just a little bit forward, and there was a second there where it almost looked like he was going to be landing it on his head, <laughs> which is he not allowed. He it there for a minute, but yeah, that's it, not allowed. As cool as that would look, it is a safety concern, and it is not allowed. It is specifically outlined, so he knew that, and that's why he had to drop it forward. But incredible performance nonetheless new pace setters in that heat. We have our third heat taking to the stage. Glenn, Glenn Cutler of England in lane one, Anton Larsen of Sweden in lane number two, Kip Leitner of USA in lane three, and Marco Antonio Reyes Gonzalez of Chile in lane number four. Wow. You gotta leave it to the Latinos to have very long that and is, very that. illustrious names. That was, that was good. That just rolled off the tongue. You gotta let it roll. You gotta let it roll. Go with our masters 40 plus stand submit press medley. We are in heat number three. Look at Marco on lane four, just a massive shelf. Wow. Our Chilean athlete. All four athletes onto the monster dumbbell. You see that clean, it just blew up there from Marco. Beautiful press. 
Lane two to four, straight onto the yoke. Mitchell Hooper to the rescue right there. Thank you, well strongest man. Nice and fast on his feet. Marco on lane four. Kip as well, on both on the block. Just gonna get that hands in the right position for this press. Unfortunately, couldn't get his hands there, but we'll have got Kip on it as well, and we'll have got Anton. Can we see it? Come on. Come on, we want to see it. Wow, another impressive heat. Where several men make it to that block. And Marco was looking like such a beast. And you can see it when he takes to the stage. He is just wide in the shoulders. Yeah. The big shelf for the bar to rest on. Good job, Marco. <laughs> he, he screams out to us. He was close. He was very close. As he close. heavily breathes. And he's still smiling. Though. He is. I love he, that. He's still he, smiling. He did a great job. You can't deny that. He was absolutely amazing. But just unfortunately, that block is a destroyer. <laughs> that's that's a good way to put it. A destroyer indeed. We have Paul Buana in heat number four in lane one of Zambia. In lane two, Chris Porter of the USA. In lane three, James Stewart of Jersey Channel Islands. And in lane number four, Matthew Ridal of Spain. <laughs> Riddell? Riddell? Riddell. Riddell. Riddell, I'm seeing, is the correct okay. pronunciation. Um, very strong, very good energy, always happy. Um, I love that guy, he is great. And his hair is amazing. Power braids. Yeah, love that. Why and, would you not uh, have that? A long beard to match in the front, too. That's going to be tricky with that block. A massive man. And Chris Porter out of Colorado, a mountain man himself. I'm looking forward to this heat. These are big dudes. These are big guys. Can we see them cross that block then? Just getting some adjustments on that yoke in lane number two for Chris. And the stage is set. Wow. Matthew Riddell. Matthew, strip James press. Stewart right behind. Another good press. And James does not get that lift. No, come on, Matthew. Got to stabilize that yoke. I get it though. Too much swinging going on. The judge would not give him the down call. Come on. Oh, he's. Come on, Matthew. So frustrating because he's got that strength there which I believe would also transition into that block press, but it's just that swing and that pendulum effect. It's that element of challenge that that yoke poses. I mean, he was looking good. He stabilized a little bit right before the drive, but there was a slight tilt in his yoke when he went for that overhead press, yep. and that caused a big swing at lockout, and it's tough. It's, it's frustrating. Frustrating is the word. That's it. That's it. Okay, we have heat number five, Six, Sigfus Fostal of Iceland in lane one, Steve Hudon of Canada in lane two, Matt Holland of USA in lane three, and Chris Schwant of USA in lane number four. Another four massive guys. Are we going to see this block press from these four athletes? Iceland, Canada, USA, USA. Thank you. 
He rushed into that there, Chris, and swung a little bit too much. Hand is slipping as well. He needs to just take Lost his time on this. Lost that dumbbell. Chris Font, he gets the yoke. <laughs> he cuts it. He was nervous, about, more nervous about not getting the, the <laughs> down call with it going behind him than it hitting his yeah. head. <laughs> wow. Incredible. That was incredible. I think the biggest challenge there was the uh, yoke press there. Chris Schwant. Incredible. Well done, Chris. Finishes the medley. I want to give a shout out to Sigfus Fostal on lane one. One thing that many people will not know is that he beat cancer this year. Oh, So wow. he beat cancer. He came out the other end okay. And more than okay, he is here at the official Strongman Games giving it all on the field. Absolute power. What in an many inspiration. Ways. Inspiration. Heat number six. One of my favorite people in all of Strongman, Manuel Angulo out of Chile, always has the biggest smile on his face. He's so happy to be here. Rano Heinla of Estonia in lane two, one of the strongest deadlifters in the entire planet. Heat number three, Majaya David Mbweri of Zambia. And in lane number four, Michael Blackwood of Australia. Chris Swan, 46.6 seconds, our event leader. Incredible. Made it look like a breeze. Made that super easy. Manuel, the Chilean mountain, his moniker. I met him yesterday. He is lovely. Big smile on his face, came right up and gave me a big hug. What I a love nice that guy. guy. Love him. Blazing through this. There you go. Get under it. Let's go, Let's go. Round of Heinla wow. onto the block. 35 seconds left. You got it, Mike. Heinla. Wow. Looks like 28 seconds. Or, uh, sorry. Yeah, about a 32, 33 second finish right there. Incredible. I was counting how much time he had, he had left. left. <laughs> Come on, guys. Ten seconds left to get these monsters up, girls. Uh, we've run out of time. Unfortunately, we don't have time to finish that rep, guys. No. What cannot be forgotten is they got that barbell, and that is points. It is points. All, every, every lift, every little second counts. But our new leader, Rauno Heinla, will get an official time. That was about 32, 33 seconds. Go, kid. However, this heat coming up, heat number seven, big, bad Ken McClayland of the USA yep. in lane number one. Jeff Henderson, USA in lane two. Woo! Big Laws, <gasps> Lawrence Chalet of big UK Laws. in lane three, and Big Matt Webb, a lot of big athletes in USA lane four. This is going to be a incredibly powerful heat. I am a huge fan of Big Laws, and I have never seen him compete, because by the time I started going to see shows, he had decided he wasn't competing so much anymore, so I haven't actually got to see him compete, so I'm super excited. He's a massive inspiration. He's someone amazing. who I looked up to as I was up and coming in the sport. Someone who I've been lucky to share words of wisdom with and have imparted on me. Ken McClelland, I've competed with before. He's a joy to be around, but just a massive man. If you ever shake his hands, you will lose his, your hand in his. Jeff Henderson, I've competed with before at the Arnold Amateur World Championship before I turned pro. And then Matt Webb did so well last year. I mean, these guys are forces. We got some good lineup here. Let's go. Beautiful. All four competitors move into the monster dumbbell now. Come on, Loss. Got 
got it. He's just composing himself. Just a bit, a little bit dizzy, Matt I think. gets the down call. And we've got Jeff on the block press. Three men on the block. Matt just wound up a little too tight. Couldn't get his hand placed under. Ken McClellan manhandling that block. Have we got position. Time? Five seconds. Oh, just run. First place, it is. Rauno Heinle. In four with four reps at 32.78 seconds. In second place. Chris Schwant. Four reps at 46.68 seconds. And in third place, Marco. Marco Antonio Reyes Gonzalez. <laughs> You were definitely going to say that one. <laughs> Three reps, 26.09 seconds. And then 10th place, Scott Blum with three reps in 38.28 seconds. And then we've got in 11th place there, Doug Madewell with three reps at 42.43 seconds. Matthew R Riddell, two reps, 16 point 15, no, one second, sorry, 16.1 seconds. And then down to 20th place is Majaya David Mberry. <laughs> one rep, 7.51 seconds. And then following there, 21st place, Matt Holland, one rep, 99.98 seconds. And then we've got Danny Dinston, Chris Porter, and Steve Houdon. Steve Houdon. Seeing much movement here. Oh, oh, we got movement. <laughs> we got a slide. That doesn't count. No, it doesn't. They're not going to give it to him unless it leaves no. the ground, no matter how far it inches forward. Okay. Okay, we are not getting anything here. Seven hundred and fifty pounds is glued to the ground. Yep, yeah, I mean it is stuck. I mean, let's hand it to Steve. He kept trying to the end of the whistle there. But yeah, it just wasn't happening in this heat. Some lonely stones. Lonely frames. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Even they need a hug. All right. Heat two. Michael Blackwood of Australia, lane one. Manuel Angulo of Chile in lane two. Paul Mumzwana, Mumzwana of Zambia in lane three. Excuse me. And Matt Holland of the USA in lane four. First one out the gates. Incredible grip power from the Chilean mountain. And it was moving well there, so keep that going again up to that line. Get that one more time, you can get that over, and then you can head back for those stones. Manny gets it onto the stones. It. Let's go. Up. Good pace here. Oh, wow. Come on, finish it. Let's go, Manny. That's incredible. Wow. Yes. Manuel oh, Angulo. Took that extra little bit, just in case. <laughs> He's still going. <laughs> he probably had to, to take him. it to the end of the map. You did amazing. <laughs> wow. He's just being short. Yeah, yeah. Extra it, precautious. You know, I want to recall OSG last year in Florida. Manuel made it very close to the finals. He was in 11th place, Dimitar Sabatinov. 
took that 10th place spot oh. and just narrowly edged out Manny. So Manny got to taste almost into the finals. And I want to imagine that had just really lit a fire under his rear for this one. Okay, moving on to lane or to heat number three, Majaya David Mumberry of Zambia in lane one, Glenn Cutler of England in lane two, James Stewart of the Jersey Channel Islands in lane number three, and I believe it will be a three men heat. I am judging by the fact that he is sitting calmly in front of us that Big Laws has withdrawn from the contest. Unfortunately, yes, he has. But with many years worth of experience accrued you know when the body needs to be pulled back yeah for the sake of not having anything worse happen to yeah. it yeah we don't want it to be anything this long term that can't be fixed so we're still amazing to have him here absolutely very inspiring manuel angulo with the time of 51 our new leader in our men's masters 40 plus it's Majaya David Murray. And in lane number three, we go to English, Glenn Cutler. And in lane number four, the Jersey Channel Islands, Jimmy Stewart. Hey, hey, hey. Here we have James Stewart taking lane four right there. Zambia, first to clear the course. Every other athlete seems to be neck and neck. He takes his time here, he's gonna get it completed and in a good time as well. Majaya wow. Mberry. Great finish, I think we have a new leader. I think so. Majaya David Mberry of Zambia, our new event leader. Wow. That was good. A couple of drops on the frame, but the stones moved very, very well. Sub 40 finish for an over 40 athlete. That is good. That is good indeed. But we have plenty more heats to go. Heat number four, Gregor Sermensky of Poland in lane one. Randy Cole, USA in lane number two. Matt Gary of USA in lane three. And Sigfus Fostal of Iceland in lane four. how it's done. Heading back to the stones now. Look at Sigma 
Rose. This is incredible. I love it. Wow. Yes. And holding it for style points oh, there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember, everyone, this is a man who beat cancer earlier this year. Yes. And he is here with a vengeance, showing he is unstoppable. Sigfus Fostal. What a guy. What a guy. And Gregor Szymanski also finishes. There you have 34. it. 34.09 seconds from Sigfus Fostal of Iceland right there as the heats inch closer and closer to a potential sub 30 second finish. Let's have our next heat out now as we put everything back into place, ready to go again. In lane number one of heat number five will be Matthew Riddell of Spain. Doug Madewell of USA in lane two, Scott Bloom of USA in lane three, and Clint McClelland, USA in lane four. It's gonna be a good heat to watch. Clint McClelland has competed at Giants Live. He has been a repeated reserve at World's Strongest Man. A massive individual with massive bear paws. I anticipate a grip event like this is going to be very strong for Ken. But Matthew Riddle is just emanating an energy about him, isn't he? I love his energy, and I know he was disappointed in the first event. So I think, you know, with his energy, it's probably gave him a little bit, a little bit of a kick up there. So yeah. I'm expecting good things in this event from him. Look so small in his hands. Ken McClellan. Wow. We've got Matthew and Lane Vaughn now onto the stones. And they're moving well from what we can see here. You see on the screen they're moving really well. Keep going to get it over the line. Can he do it? Yes, he can. Matthew Riddell. Got two athletes left on the floor to get those stones across, and the time is up. I believe Doug Madewell did get some valuable inches right there. Yeah, he did. The last ditch effort, some major hustle. <laughs> Ken Phelan. Thirty-one point one two seconds from Glenn McClelland. Wow. Closer and closer to that 30 second threshold. And here we have heat number six, Anton Larson of Sweden in lane number one, Matt Webb, USA, lane two, Kip Leitner, USA in lane three, and Johan Espen Krona of Sweden in lane number four. Who's standing out here for you? Matt Webb. Matt Webb of USA, lane number two right there, getting to watch him last year. Knowing he's back with a vengeance, he had some narrow finishes, I believe, behind Big Z last year that he's got some extra motivation for this year. I'm going to keep an eye on lane two then. <laughs> but again, this is a, a heat where all these athletes have earned their spot here. Yep. And we have been so surprised in this event already, so will it continue to surprise us? In lane number three, Johan was so impressive to watch in that press medley. He was. 
Can he nail this one as well? We will find out. Larson and yeah. Johannes Petrona, the Swedes. Look at that speed from Anton. Johan narrowly behind him. Anton onto the stones. Nice fast pace. So keep this going. He's going to get oh a really gosh. good time. A little bit more. Anton wow. Larson a fast recovery. That might be a new leader. And Johan Espenkrona has finished as well. Beautiful. <laughs> we have been surprised consistently. Matt we Webb, just his grip, his backswing, whatever it is, it is not able to hold up against the frame. It's not playing the game today. No. A warm Swedish embrace right here by the two athletes. Checking on big laws. <laughs> There's our leader in that gold shirt. There he is. 24.23 seconds from Anton Larsson of Sweden in that lane one of heat six. 24 Incredible. seconds past that 30 second threshold. But here we have, in lane one, Jeff Henderson of USA. Lane two, Marco Antonio Reyes Gonzalez of Chile in lane number two, Chris Schwant, USA, lane three, and Rano Heinla, Estonia, lane number four. Our seventh and final heat in the Masters. In our final heat for the 40s plus, sticks and stones, Tyler. Do you think Rano can beat 24 seconds? Oh, I'm not sure. That is a tough time to beat. That was super fast. Do we think Rano is fast on his feet or just static and strong? We're about to find out. Yeah, we are. We are about to find out. Gonzalez, the Chilean. Wow. Smalls up there, but Gonzalez not. Effective. Quick Put recovery right from back Marco. Up. Yeah. Straight back to those stones. Well, we are at 20 seconds right now. 60 seconds. Big man. Look at him go. Loving this. Big man, big steps. That wow. Marco Antonio Reyes Gonzalez. There you go. Finishes. Blazing fast, but I don't think it is quite fast enough to edge out Larson. Incredible. A big man, a humble giant. I got to speak with him yesterday at the last meeting. Unstoppable. Again, some surprises in that category. Some people we thought would um, fly through really struggled. All right, and here we have the official scores. Anton Larson, 24.23 seconds. Very fast difference between first and second place, but Ken McClellan narrowly over that 30 second mark, 31.12 seconds. In third place, Johan Espenkrona, 32.81 seconds. Sixth is Fostal, 34.09 seconds. And three tenths of a second, a little bit less, Marco Antonio Reyes Gonzalez, we just saw right there. Blazing fast, but still many athletes finishing that. Impressive.
And we have Doug Madewell in 11th place with 51 feet 0 inches and every other athlete was unable to finish the frame with Randy Cole in 12, 36 foot 1 inch down to Kip Leitner in 20th place right there with 11 feet 5 inches. And this is where we have some big surprises here with the exception of, of course, Paul Mwanza really sticking it for that 10 inch score mark. Rauno Heinla, our event leader, zeroed on that event. The hefty bars as our 105 men. In lane number one will be Chris Porter of USA. In lane number two will be Steve Houdon of Canada, a two. Oh, we are gonna run a full four-man heat. I think we are. Paul Mwanza of Zambia in lane three. Okay, we're just making sure that we've got everyone. Well, it might be a there three, has been man. a slight change, maybe a three. It might be a three. But that is Chris Porter, Steve Houdon, and Paul Mwanza in Here their respective go. lanes. Our first heat for the 40 plus men's category. There's Darren Sadler right back there walking behind Mr. Giants Live himself. Good lift from Paul in lane three. Paul Mwanza locking out 675. And Mwanza Locks out 725. Yes. He's happy with that. Yeah, he impressed me yesterday and will continue to do so today. But all men getting some valuable points. Heat two takes the arena floor with Jeff Henderson of the USA in lane one, Kip Leitner of USA in lane two, Rano Heinla of Estonia in lane three, and Glenn Cutler of England in lane four. I hate to jump to conclusions, but Rano Heinla, one of the strongest deadlifters on the planet and someone who has claimed the glory of winning the World Deadlift Championships, I think he's got this in the bag. 800 pounds is nothing for big Rano. 800 pounds. Another man who deadlifts 1,000 plus pounds with seeming ease. I'm looking forward to the seat. Here we go. <laughs> I'm just going to sit back and watch this one. Yeah. Wow. There we go. Showing us how it's done. Every bar looked exactly the same from bar one through five. Now that Rano is done warming up, let's get him to max out. <laughs> wow, he can just go again. Run back to the start. He's not even breaking a sweat. He's not even bothered. Glenn Cutler of England on bar number four, 765, eight plates. Just a bit much. Not today. What do you think it's like for all these other guys going up against Rano on, on this heat? I think they know, they expect that anyway, so they're probably not chasing it. Well, I tell you what, Rano did need to make up some points. He underperformed he did. severely on that carry medley. So this is big, but as much of a disparity there might be between places one and two, and his big points for Rano, and he needs it. All right, in heat three, lane one will be Matt Webb of USA, lane two, Matt Holland, USA, lane three, Matt Gary, USA, and for an all-American spread, lane number four, Chris Schwant, USA. 
Rano Heinle finished in just barely over 20 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. I think him strapping up for each bar ate much more time than the actual lifts. Not Matt Webb. Webb is an athlete back with a vengeance after last year. I'm pretty sure his beard alone could lift these first three bars. Chris in lane four, moving on to that fourth bar. Moving with some ease, a little stumble, but... Chris Swant answering Heinle's call. Come on, come on. He needs to blast through that second tug. Well, it's just a little belt. belt. That's a little belt for a big man, but he's also got a suit underneath, so he's got plenty of support, just not enough power. Not enough left in the tank for that last one, but that was an amazing performance. Even that fourth bar, like we cannot undermine how heavy that is. Eight plates on each side. That's insane. It is. Heat number four, James Stewart of Jersey Channel Islands will take lane one. Randy Cole of USA will take lane two. Doug Madewell of USA in lane three, and Scott Bloom of USA in lane four. Scott Bloom, a massive man, the pace setter for this heat. But James Stewart seizes the opportunity, advances to the third bar. Doug Madewell in lane three. Advances to the eight plate bar. Let's go, Doug. Solid points for Madewell there. Gets a good split time in completing the three bars. Our second to last heat, heat number five in lane one will be Manuel Angulo, Chile. In lane number two will be Matthew Riddale of Spain. Lane number three, Gregor Szymanski of Poland. And lane number four, Majaya David Mberry of Zambia. Manuel Angulo in lane one, the Chilean mountain. Former world's strongest man competitor that I had the pleasure of sharing that stage with. I imagine that after day one, Manny is vying for some big points here. And we've got Matthew in lane two. All these guys are juggernauts. Every single one of them did so well yesterday on that final event. They did. Second to last heat. I'm excited. Manny and Gregors. Even with that little tilt, that bar is no match for Manny, but Gregors setting the pace, locking out bar three. Manny might be taking a bit longer, but he's looking good so far. He's just taking his time, but it's looking strong.
Szymanski locks out bar four. Oh, come on. The whistle has been blown. Our sixth and final heat in lane one, Marco Antonio Reyes Gonzalez of Chile. In lane number two, Johan Espencrona of Sweden. Lane number three, Ken McClellan of USA. And lane number four, Anton Larsson of see Sweden. Espencrona walking out with the leader shirt on there. Well earned golden shirt. The golden shirt. To keep himself bright and glowing in everyone's peripherals. Marco Gonzalez did so well on that frame carry yesterday. And Ken McClelland is just such a behemoth of a man. An absolute tank. Final heat. Here we go. Good lift from lane one to three there. Marco, the Beautiful. pace setter. That's been Krona not far behind him though. The man in gold. Step into that fourth bar. Setting the pace now. But Ken in lane three. Oh, oh, took over. McClelland looking strong. Here we go. Come on, come on, come on. And he's going to get it. Come on. Oh. That was so close. Look at that nosebleed. <laughs> so close. Close oh. indeed. Frustrating, but still gave it that all. Well done. I wonder how Marco would have done if he held on just a little bit and got that down call. I really wonder. But Rauno Heinla, to no one's surprise. No surprise there. Congratulations. Taking the lead on that event. Thank you. All right, we have our official scores. Rano Heinle, five bars in 32.9 seconds. The only man to get all five bars. Chris Font, four bars in 31.36 seconds. Ken McClellan, four bars in 32.08. And Johan Espencrona, four bars in 34.57 seconds. The rest of the, of the athletes, Gregors and Marco, were the only other two to get four bars. But finishing with a bit of a gap behind Johan in fourth place. And every other athlete on that one through 10 placing gets three bars. Majaya David Maberry, three bars, 39.7 seconds. Down to 15th place with Paul Mwanza, three bars and 52.96 seconds. 16, 17, and 18 will get to only two bars, whereas every other athlete, starting with Jeff Henderson in 19th place, only managed to successfully lock out one bar. Still points on the board. Chris Porter in 21st place needed those points, and so did Matt Holland and Steve Houdon. But the rest of the athletes, Blackwood, Fostal, Stinson, Chalet, are out. All right, in lane one, we have Steve Houdon of Canada. In lane two, Chris Porter. In lane three, Paul Monza of Zambia. Look at Paul. That Zambian strength has been incredible to behold here at OSG. You can definitely see how heavy that backpack is on these competitors. Paul going for a horizontal pick. What do you think of that, Devin? Definitely an interesting strategy. We haven't seen it yet, but it's obviously working. He's able to pick it up and run with it. What would be the benefit of that? Maybe he's just a little bit more used to it. Maybe he doesn't have a Husafel to train with, so he's not used to that feeling of it in his hands. Maybe he's just used to it being like picking up sandbag long ways, and that's just what he felt most comfortable doing. 
Paul Monza is finishing the course. Closing in on that line. Sub one minute. Done. About a 56 second finish. Chris Porter getting some very valuable points here. Look at that. USA hails from Colorado. A mountain man. Chris Porter finishes. Steve Houdon getting every bit of distance he can. Every inch counts. Falling a bit short. <laughs> he chuckled. Did it tickle you to say that? It did. It did. <laughs> I'm glad you got that off your I chest. I was honestly holding that back a little bit, but I'm glad I finally let it out. <laughs> oh, if anyone, it would be you, my friend. Absolutely. Okay, heat number two takes the arena floor. Kip Leitner of USA in lane one. Get Glenn Cutler of England in lane number two. James Stewart of Jersey Channel Islands in lane three. And Jeff Henderson. USA, lane number four. These weights haven't changed. The athletes have gotten a bit older, but their body frames are no longer restricted by a certain amount of weight. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. With you being a super heavyweight and open, as the weights go up, the athletes' bodies also go up. Do you think this will play a factor in how fast the athletes are able to finish, or do you think their body weight makes it a bit slower of a finish? It really all does depend on the athlete. I mean, I know that's a cop out of an answer, but it genuinely does because we got guys that focus more on their cardio than their static. We got guys that are heavier. We got guys that are lighter. And then obviously, you got to take the age into account in a certain extent. Some guys, they just move better than they did when they were, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years younger. Yeah. So you got to really roll all of that into one, and you really have to take it for what it is with each athlete. Some guys are going to be faster. Some guys are going to be able to use their body weight because they're heavier. It really all does depend. But it's one thing that makes it interesting about this class because there's so many different variables. There absolutely is. There absolutely is. And it gets me really excited to watch the Opens coming up next. But these over 40 athletes, I mean, they have such a wide array of body frames as well, too. Yeah. You know, guys with different strengths and, you know, sure, we, we could pick on them as being the old guys, but they are still young enough to where that muscle can operate fast when you turn it on. The joints are well conditioned, not too, <laughs> too much mileage. All right, Glenn Cutler is off, followed narrowly by Kip Leitner. Glenn Cutler making quick work of this run back. Starting to separate himself from the pack. He is. Oh, but he, that gap is closing. It's got to be those shorts. It has to be the shorts. Look at the acceleration out of light wow. during lane two. Really pumping it. He has taken Where the did lead. Where this come from? My goodness. Kip Leitner smashes it. I believe we have a new leader right there. We'll get the official time, but. <laughs> what a finish. Absolutely. Even on our screen, we didn't even see Kip coming. And then out of nowhere, he accelerated blitz past that finishing line. James Stewart finishing the course even after a costly fall in the beginning. Good recovery. Very impressive. And that's only lane, or that's only heat number two. Thanks. Heat number three, lane number one will be Randy Cole of USA, Sigfus Fostal of Iceland. In lane number two, Matt Gary of USA. In lane number three, and Manuel Angulo, the Chilean mountain. In lane number four. Oh, is Manny, did I get that wrong? We have a bit of a different order. Oh, Matt Gary. Well, there's just something wrong with the list that I have. Okay, so we have Jeff Henderson, USA in lane one. Randy Cole, USA in lane number two. Just sick with Foster Ice in lane three. And Matt Gary, USA in lane four.
On the whistle. And we are off. I would definitely argue that the positioning of the sandbag on your body is definitely crucial for your foot speed moving in between events. Obviously, being able to have that higher up on your chest, it's gonna restrict your breathing a little bit, but it's gonna make give you the ability to walk with full strides and really get the footwork down so you can get that bag off your body as fast as possible. And we're seeing it right there with Randy Cole. Still gets it just barely, but he was having to really lift every leg against that 300 pound tombstone every single step. Absolutely. How much of a factor do you think that the athlete's belt and that hip support belt in the backpack plays a role? It's definitely got to be super constricted because a lot of these athletes aren't going to have this rough bag to train with, so they're completely unfamiliar. It's throwing off their leverages, their balance, absolutely everything. Randy Cole pulls it across the finish line, edging out Matt Gary in lane number four. Sigfus Fostal in the lane number three. And Jeff Henderson just had a bit of a difficulty getting going on this stone. Or the, the sphere-shaped sandbag, I should say. Looks like a stone medicine filled with ball. sand. The medicine ball. So I would love to see you toss that medicine ball. <laughs> do you fancy some wall ball shots with it? Yeah, I think I think Maybe we some, should do strongman dodgeball. <laughs> some some Russian twists. <laughs> some Russian twists. Look at Manny. How good is it to see Manny out here? Awesome. I haven't seen him since World's Strongest Man 2022. <sighs> He, well, he was out here at, at OSG last year, but he barely missed the finals. He was in 11th place where Dimitar Sabatinov took 10th ah. place, just missing that day three, or in, yesterday, or in last year's case with the hurricane, day two. Thank goodness we don't have any problems like that to deal with this year. Yeah, I am I'm very glad to be further inland and a bit later on in the year. All right, so that will put Man Manuel Angulo of Chile in lane number one. Should make Scott Bloom of the USA in lane two. Ajay David Barry of Zambia in lane three. And, well, let's see. Forgive me, ladies and gentlemen, my list is just not correct. I don't believe we have Scott Bloom on here at all. Matt Webb right there in lane number four. Matthew Riddell of Spain in lane number three. Look Amazing at Matt Webb. Pick. So Matthew close. Riddell just missing his sled. And Webb is onto the backwards drag. And he has good speed. Let's see if he can keep that throughout the course. Majaya well, David Maberry is on his sled as well. Oh, Manny, come on, don't walk. Where is that fire? Matt Webb taking the win. The heat. Leader. I don't think it was fast enough to beat out Kip Leitner. Majaya Mabari finishes as well. Matthew Redale gasses out, as does Manuel Angulo. This is where we were talking about you get to see that cardio factor really. Absolutely. I can only imagine. It's, it's not as heavy as these big sandbags in comparison, but 101 pounds in the back, your heart rate's accelerating, the blood's pumping. It's, it's gotta be just a little bit of extra constriction. It's gotta take such a toll on your body. Not only is this not the easiest sport to compete in, it's actually quite, quite difficult, believe it or not. But we're gonna throw 100 pounds on your back and tell you to do the exact same event. That is just absolutely menacing. That is grueling. You know, I really wanna laugh at all of the initial critiques when this event was released, that people, that the athletes would be wearing a, a ruck pack or a backpack and doing all these loaded carries like, oh, that's CrossFit now. Yep. Look at this. These weights are so excessive. It's I just would, absurd. I would absolutely love and invite any CrossFitter to come and try this event. I guarantee you they would have much harder of a time than any of our, our strongman athletes 
today. Yeah, well, they, they are hybrid athletes, so I wouldn't want to discount them. But yeah, it's uh, it is it's not truly discounting. Impressive. It's just it's it's appreciating what we do. That's it. Well said, yes. my friend. Well said. Yes. Very eloquently put. We have heat number five: Doug Madewell in lane one, Gregor Szymanski of Poland in lane two, Anton Larson of Sweden in lane three, and Bruno Heinle of Estonia in lane four. USA, Poland, Sweden, Estonia. Where even is Estonia? It's far east, man. It's, it's farther east than us. It's out there in I'm Europe. I'm aware of that. <laughs> it's one of those countries that shares that same region with Lithuania, Latvia, all in that, that area. I don't that's why that they that's all... a real place. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get you a map, Evan. <laughs> I won't read it. I want to see those T-Rex claws pointed out for me. <laughs> And we are off. Rano making up some points here. At least going to try. A good, solid pace, not rushing anything, but also not making any mistakes. Gregor Szymanski of Poland edges ahead. Rano closing the gap. Madewell, unfortunately, having a bit of difficulty with the sphere. Rano needs this. Rano's keeping that speed. But Gregor's not going to let him have it for free. Oh, he's got he it. Oh, Just I don't know. Barely. I don't know, man. Uh, We're going to have to really get that the That was a photo official. finish, absolutely. But I don't know. I think I'd give that to Greg. I really do. I, I want to say that as well. But, yeah, but just a fraction of a second. So close. And Doug Madewell leaving it all here on the field. Five seconds. I was thinking, someone get this bag off me. <laughs> I'm not even competing, and that's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah. My back is hurting just watching this. <laughs> I think that... I mean, Rauno was probably already in a very comfortable position going into the finals. Well, not too comfortable, but from a confidence standpoint, he needed to get some good points there on that carry. That was not our last heat. We have one more heat, heat number six of our men's Masters 40 plus. Lane number one will be Chris Schwant of USA. Lane number two, big Marco Antonio Reyes Gonzalez of Chile. Lane number three, Ken McClelland. And lane number four, Johan Espen Krona of Sweden. The front runners so far in this competition. It's, this is going to be an exciting event, that's for sure. Who's your pick? I got to go with my countryman, Ken McClelland. You also have Chris Schwant up there, but big Ken, man. He's got those bear paws. He does, giving Mark Felix a run for his money with the size of those mitts. Have they done a comparison on whose hands are bigger? I, I believe they did about two years ago, yeah. When Ken was competing at Giants? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, man. Those are, those are some guys that I would, I would not want to take. I would not want to go against them and slap fest. Absolutely not. I mean, Ken McClellan having a background in mixed martial arts saying that they had to custom make his gloves. Let's Can you imagine taking a punch from somebody that has custom made gloves? <laughs> <laughs> it's something indeed. There's Big Mark on the screen right there. He has been very impressive. But a man, a gentle giant, when he's not competing, always a big smile on his face. Happy to be here. So close, advancing through that deadlift ladder, falling a bit short of that final bar. Big Johan Espenkrona of Sweden wearing that gold shirt, our leader, all eyes on him. Ready? You think he's still going to have it at the end of this? I don't know, man. Sweden has been really bringing some serious power to OSG this year. A perfect example of what you just said. Although a tight gap, he is the front runner in this heat. We're seeing more hustle from Johan than the other guys, but both Johan and Ken going for that horizontal pick. Marco closing the gap and passing McClelland. And we are on to the backwards drag. This is going to be close. Oh, but maybe not that close. 
Look at Marco. Here he comes, the Chilean. Look at the acceleration. Latino power right here on lane number two. Oh, he's going to pull into the lead, and he's got it. Oh. He's going to get it as long as he doesn't fall. Oh, oh that was close. Oh, no. Marco had a bit of a stumble there, but Johan Espenkrona of Sweden finishes first. Reyes Gonzalez is second. McLean in third. And we have Chris Schwartz getting that tombstone in the sled. The By any means costly. necessary. It's hard to come up after that. He's got five seconds. He gave it his all. He gave his all with Much the finals respect. on the line. Much respect, giving absolutely every ounce of energy that he had. I think he still gets the final, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was, that was something. Marco got so close. He was very close to etching out Johan there. That gives me chills, man. It gives me chills. Staying exciting until the very, very end. It really is. Only one weight category remains. This is the category that you and I would be competing in. Yeah, thank God I am not competing in this event. <laughs> let's talk about these weights, Evan. Yeah, let's. Going up to our men's open category. 119 pounds, 54 kilograms will be the weight in the backpack for our heavyweight men open. 300 pounds in this fear stone. So jumping into a 300 pound stone carry, chalk only with 120 pounds in your back, you, you are in essence lifting up 420 extra pounds. 120 in your back, 300 in your arms. What do you think of that? Well, hold that thought. There's our official scores. In first place, Kip Leitner in first place with a very strong lead, 39.85 seconds. Glenn Cutter, Cutler in second place, 42.67 seconds. Matt Webb, third place, 46.59 seconds. Gregors, 48.13, and only two one-hundredths of a second behind him. Ron O'Heinla, fifth place. Johan, Marco, Anton, Majaya. Matt Holland, all the athletes, first through 10, getting a strong sub-minute placing. We have 11th place through 17th place, all finishing, getting valuable points. Paul Mwanza, 54.83 points in 11th place, all the way down to Chris Porter, knocking it out and getting the whole medley done. 70.32 seconds for a 17th place finish. All the remaining athletes south of Chris will get a measurement. Manuel Angulo, Doug Madewell, and Jeff Henderson falling just behind the rest, but getting points on the board. Scott, Michael, Danny, and Big Laws out at that scoring. Back to what we were saying, Evan. That 300-pound sphere-shaped sandbag. Medicine ball. <laughs> I challenge this to you, toss it. But the tombstone will also be at 300 pounds, putting a combined weight of those bags in the sled at 600 pounds. Although that's not account, if both things are 300 pounds, that's not accounting the weight of the sled itself. So let's say a 650, close to 700 pound sled. That track. sounds a little bit more accurate, yeah. Brother, this is brutal. This is absolutely terrifying, honestly. Just even being a spectator for this, I don't know how these guys are going to be able to funk. Incredible men's 40 plus. Jonah Espencrona, yes, nailed it. 94 and points in the second place. We big have. Marco Antonio Reyes Gonzalez. <laughs> oh, I love that. 91 points in third place. Rano Heinla. 85 points. And then going down to 10th place, we've got Kip Leitner with 64 points. And that is our top 10 for the men's 40 plus. Our bags will remain the same for our men's masters 40 plus category. In lane number one will be Majaya, Majaya David Mberry of Zambia, and in lane number two will be Kip Leitner of the USA. Here we go. Kip and Majaya. Majaya falling a bit short. We're going to get this final bag. Oh, that was close for Kip. Yeah. 
Heat number two of her men's 40 plus category. Here we have Glenn Cutler, the man who made it to the final after Ken McClellan passed on his qualification to the next runner up. Glenn Cutler in, of England in lane number one and Anton Larson of Sweden in lane number two. Anton, I think, needs to just get a little bit closer. He's dancing on the edge there, repeatedly. Oh, oh no, Larson no, 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 no. with a miss. Oh, no, no, miss no, for Larson. No, no. Oh. Such a frustrating event. Frustration indeed. When that bag doesn't go over, it is hard to keep one's composure and even harder to find lasting energy to get the job done. Heat number three in lane one will be Matt Webb of USA in lane number one. In lane number two will be Gregor Szymanski of Poland. Look at that clearance by Webb. Wow. That is amazing. That's Look at that. nuts. Both men. But Webb is smashing it. On that last bag, he's going to get it. Matthew oh. Webb. 17 or 18 second finish will get the confirmation. And Gregor's about to clear his. Yes. Gregor Szymanski. Wow, that was, that was good to watch. Webb will edge out Kip Leitner unofficially. I'll get the confirmation shortly from on the field, but just a lightning fast and powerful finish out of Matt Webb. Two heats remain, however. Eighteen point six five seconds makes Matt Webb our new event leader. Following that performance in lane one will be Chris Schwant of the USA and in lane number two, Marco Antonio Reyes Gonzalez of Chile. That's my favorite name. It just rolls off the tongue. I love so it. And he is such a pleasant guy to talk to. A massive man. A massive man. Here we go. Good start, both athletes here. Oh, just missed it. Marco falling a bit short. Schwant catches up. Oh. Moment of opportunity for Chris in lane one. Wow, both men just at the edge of the road. Five seconds, last ditch efforts. 
Oh, and didn't quite make it. But valiant nonetheless. However, Matt Webb, Matt untouchable Webb. so far with one final heat remaining. Rauno Heinlev, Estonia will take lane one. And Johan Espenkrona of Sweden, wearing his gold leader shirt, will take lane number two. You can hear that man breathing heavy like it's bellowing through a massive tree trunk. <laughs> Wow! Ooh, he is ready. <laughs> build the arena floor. We're going to see something epic here. Swedish power. And the deadlift master, Rano Heinlein, lane one. Whoa, look at the clearance of these bags. Neck and neck here. This is what we want to see in the final heat. Espen Krona edges ahead. This is it. Johan Espen Krona. Oh, both athletes. Wow. With about a 14 and 15 second respectively, but that will put Johan Espen Krona as our new leader. Lightning fast. If you blinked, you would have missed it. So I know quite a bit about Glenn. I've seen him compete a lot of times back home. Fantastic strong man. Used to be a 105, but I mean, it's great to see him doing so well in the Masters category. Well, he is the first man to load the stone, closely followed by Majaya. Losing his belt there. On to the 350-pound stone for Glenn. It's great to see how global the sport's become as well, hasn't it? We've, we've got competitors from all over the world, all different continents. It's fantastic to see and what a performance from um, Majaya David as well. Absolutely. There has been some incredible power showing up from that side of the globe. A worldwide event like this bringing the globe together indeed. Glenn Cutler attempting the 375, falling a bit short. I mean, he, he, he got in because um, obviously Ken McClellan got injured. But he spoke to me this morning before the competition. He's like, oh, how would you feel? I was like, you've just got to grab these opportunities with two hands. You know, everything happens for a reason. He's got in there and he's put in a great performance today. Now, Terry, we are at the end of three days of competing. I imagine these athletes' muscles are screaming, fighting them at every step of the way, every stone load. How do you quell those inner feelings of telling you to stop and just keep that pedal down for something like this? I mean, obviously, I mean, it's tough for all the guys and girls that have been competing, but these guys are, are in their 40s and we had the 50 category earlier. Your recovery's not as good, you know, you really struggle, but I mean, obviously most of it comes down to the sort of determination of these guys, the competitive nature that they've all got, and it's great that they've got this platform to sort of have that outlet as well. I mean, just because you sort of become in your 40s doesn't mean that that competitive spirit goes away, and um, obviously they've had it in abundance. They've been working hard for three days, going away, recovering as best they can. I'm sure some of them have been doing ice baths and stretching and foam rolling and getting treatment and things like that, and then they've sort of come out here and just, just put in amazing performances on the third day of competition. The third day, the finals, this is where all the chains come off. We have our second heat of athlete take to the arena floor in lane one. Right there on the screen is Anton Larsson of Sweden. And in lane number two, Kip Leitner of the USA to his right. What do you think about the Swedish representation here? Really good. I mean, in, in all categories, they've had, they've had good people. Um, I mean, it's great to see because when I first started Strongman, Sweden, Norway and the Scandinavian countries had a real sort of big influence on the sport. They were very strong nations. Perhaps had a little bit of a sort of dip recently, but it's great to see them on their way back up. And all the countries that come together at the official Strongman game stage, it is a unity, a community worldwide you love to see it, and you can't help but feel that power extend from here to all corners of the globe. The stage is set, and here we go. I think that's the beauty of OSG, though. All the barriers are off. There's no Everyone's competitive, rivals, but friends at the same time, and it's such a fantastic spirit. And where do they go? This um, Kip, Kip Leitner really impressed me um, getting through to the final. He put in that amazing performance on the, on the medley yesterday and um, got him, earned himself a place in the top 10. That medley was definitely a proving grounds. It was a survival challenge indeed. Really filtered out a lot of the athletes as they go into the final. Yeah, I mean, he showed obviously he's a very fit guy as well as being very strong, which is what you need for competitions at this level. Anton Larson loads his fourth stone, that 350 pounder onto the 375. 
It's great to see how competitive the Masters categories have been this year as well, um, in the in the men's and the women's. It's sort of gone to the days where it's sort of like there's a couple of good guys and the rest of the guys are a little bit below the standard. The standard from top to bottom has been so much better this year, in my opinion, than it's been in the past. Absolutely. With five seconds left on the clock, even making that 400 pound to his lap, Anton Larson unfortunately runs out of time, but... <laughs> you and I both know getting a 400 pounder to the lap that is something he should be proud of for regardless. sure for sure definitely and um I mean it's just such a fantastic thing to see like I, I won the Masters what back in 2019 and, and just see the progression because I've not been to OSG since I came and did that the progression in the standard of the Masters guys has improved at the same rate as all the other categories the sports just getting bigger and bigger the athletes are getting better and better and it's, it's great to see do you remember the weight of your final stone in 2019? We, we actually didn't have stones that year. We did power oh, stairs. that's right. Yeah. That's right. But, I mean, it, it's certainly been um, been a very, very high level this year. And um, lots of, of good athletes, guys that perhaps sort of just started a little bit later. They never got that opportunity to get to world's strongest man in the sort of real real terms. So, they, you know, they now get this opportunity to compete against quality athletes. And quality athletes, speaking of, here we have in Heat 3, lane 1 will be Chris Schwant of USA, and lane number 2, Matt Webb, also of USA, an All-American Heat. Matt's impressed me on a couple of events. I actually refereed him on the deadlift. He was super impressive. Really, really good quality deadlift. A good strong man as well. He's been good across the board. Absolutely. He, he impressed me last year. He impressed me this year. I enjoy following his journey on social media. Both these guys, though, just powerhouses. I think... Webb is built for this event, though. A one motion from Webb with power. Another one motion on that 325 for Matt. He's looking strong. The one motion with 350. <laughs> Yeah, he looks super strong on this. 375 goes up easy for Webb. The final stone, 400 pounds. Big Matthew Webb right there on the bottom. I think we're going to see him finish this here. Matt Webb. Big performance. About now. a 44 second finish there. Look at that elation. He is so happy and pumped. He deserves that as well. He's earned that. What a great stone run. Chris, so close getting it to his lap. Matt Webb, with about a 45 second finish, all smiles from both men as they walk off the arena floor. They should really be proud of themselves. Both of them have been fantastic through the whole, through, through the whole show. And um, yeah, I mean, to get to this point, like I said, for any of the athletes, is really tough to do. Even tougher when you're on the, a bit on the older side as well. I know from experience, trust me, it, get, it gets harder as you get older. We try to fight those aging limitations as long as we can. And here we have two more impressive athletes in Heat 4. Gregor Semensky of Poland in lane 1. And Marco Antonio Reyes Gonzalez of Chile in lane number 2. These guys have been absolute juggernauts at every step of the way. With Matt Webb finishing just under 45 seconds, he is our new leader. But I could see either one of these guys possibly edging him out. Yeah, I mean, they, they've both been strong. I mean... Gonzalez is a real big guy, real strong guy. Um, yeah, I mean, he's been super impressive. Gregor's in the past has been an amazing strong man as well, so he's sort of got that experience. This could go either way. I mean, I think sometimes the experience can be, um, obviously, also, also means a lot of miles on the clock. So, you know, great battle between these two, and um, it's going to be great to see how it, how it, how it turns out. Here we go. One thing that's always been a tradition with the Polish athletes is they're all super well conditioned. So Gregor, as we know, will be still strong at this point of the competition. He won't be starting a fade at all. Well, one motion from Gregor's right there on that third stone. Both men synchronized loading the fourth. Oh. 
Marco on the 375. It was interesting, wasn't it? Greg Ors just took a bit of a lead at the beginning, but Marco Antonio was just that, just coming strong at the end there. So much power. Marco Gonzalez, he gets it. Wow. Fantastic effort there. He deserves that. He's been fantastic through the whole show. Yeah, I've not I've not seen Marco Antonio um, compete before, but amazing performance. They need to give it to him. I I don't. What what's happened there? They didn't. They give didn't. Him the they're time. not going to give it to him because he didn't let go of the stone, and that is an absolute injustice if they do that. I hate. I think by this point, almost um, by this point, he earned that. That yeah. needs to be given to him, and it's very easy for me to say and critique the judges, but that man put his soul into it. I mean, it's, it's one of those difficult ones, and it rules are rules, but we do have to sometimes give the, the leeway to the athletes. I had one yesterday on the, on the, um, the survival medley with, with the sled, and it, we weren't sure if it had quite crossed the line. It was like on the line, and I, I always sort of go with the side oh, of the athletes personally. That just kills me to see, and I, I know it kills him. He is just breaking down, but a man put his... And the, the audience is erupting in applause for big Marco Antonio Reyes Gonzalez. He loaded that 400-pound stone so well and fought it, recovering from the edge. We'll have to see what winds up happening there, but if you were watching, you saw that man give everything on that load. Our final heat, heat five in lane one, Rano Heinla of Estonia, and in lane number two, Johan Espenkrona of Sweden. Let's not sort of forget about this. This shows the level of this competition. Rauno Heinler almost made the final World's Strongest Man this year in the Open category against the best guys in the world, actually narrowly losing in the stone off to Brian Shaw. So he's a top quality athlete. And I think Johan, I competed against him years ago. I'd almost say he's better now than he was then. He's really come on the last couple of years. An aggressive load series from both men. Rauno putting the pressure. The final stone for Heinle, here it comes. Rauno is one of the strongest stone lifters on the planet. I have no doubt he'll get this no problem at all. So it's all down to Johan and see what he does. Easy. Our new event leader, Rauno Heinle, 33 seconds about on his finish. I'm not sure of the point situation, and yeah, does does Johan still make the win if he gets this? I am not sure. That's oh, a risky move, that. moving don't his arms. That. Oh, and oh, he gets wow. it! Johan Espenkrona, big points. That was a risky move, and we oh. rarely see it pay off. I, I was scared for him then. I just imagined that stone coming down on his leg. But Rauno. Finishing under 40 seconds, our new event leader. We will see how the points fall. Although all cameras are on Rano, so one can only assume that might mean he is the champion. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. But, and again, I, I want to go back. I, I don't want to be so critical of the judges. The rules are the rules. But with our foreign athletes, I know Marco Gonzalez doesn't speak completely fluent English and did he even scre screamed out he didn't know he didn't know he was so happy but Rano Heinla a line up right there it's a long way oh. up Rano <laughs> <laughs> maybe not maybe not his sore legs after that weekend yeah rightfully so and from one world's strongest man to another there's Mitchell Hooper giving the world's strongest man over 40 his trophy Rauno Heinla from Estonia. Estonia, Sweden, USA on the podium here.